The Tom Aspinall and John Jones beef continues. Both John and Dana White responded to Tom Aspinall's recent appearance on the Believe You Me podcast, where he called John overweight and said he'd retire him without even fighting him. We know, we know he's a bit overweight these days. The guy was sat there, mate, with the, the Cheeto fingers or whatever, the, the, the Doritos on his fingers, with his iPhone in hand, waiting for me to get knocked out so he can start tweeting about it. Let's be honest, and since, since I won that fight, he's gone completely quiet. And he'll continue to complete, go completely quiet about me until he retires because there's no way on earth that he's going to fight me. Not a chance. I will retire John Jones without even fighting him. John first responded to Tom by reposting the recent footage of Tom grappling the pro rugby player. John wrote, looks like Tom displaying that amazing UK wrestling. My focus is on Stipe. He actually wrestled Division 1. Best heavyweight of all time as of right now. Maybe Tom will go on and beat Stipe's record one day. Right now, I'm focusing on goat things. This user replied, excuses, excuses. John said, man, you guys have been really begging me lately. Is the heavyweight division really that boring without me? The beautiful thing about being in my position is I'm not defined by one fight. Most of you grew up watching me win. He continued, I guess there was a video that resurfaced recently of me saying that after Stipe, Francis was the only fight I was interested in. The video was recorded well over a year ago. That was recorded before I got injured, before there was an interim champion crowned. I had already voiced that I wasn't interested in any more randoms. Now magically, I'm ducking a fight that's never been negotiated or discussed at any table that matters. I'm sticking to my plans. John Jones jumps for no one. How many belts does one need? How many times do I have to break my own record? There are fighters literally all over the world that think in the back of their mind, I can beat John Jones. There will be no statues of you. Go out and win more. Make your name greater. That is the only way you do it. He ended it off saying, I'm 37 years old now. I've kicked everyone's ass. My job is to finish strong and make an amazing movie. Go join Tom Brady, Floyd Mayweather, and all the other retired bad asses. After Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series last night, here's what Dana had to say about John Jones versus Tom Aspinall. So, John is a very unique individual to deal with. John Jones will fight everybody. John Jones was absolutely positive. He wanted Francis. You saw what happened with Cyril Gaon. He, he will tell you, like he told us, that he would do the same thing to Francis and Gagne. He wanted that fight so bad. And for anybody who thinks, I know the whole, you know, the whole internet, oh, John Jones, he's you know, that I'm up John Jones. These are facts, facts. And since everybody has been such bags about this, I'm coming out with a nice little, nice little punch in the face for all you that think that John Jones is the greatest of all time. Um, dislike him, whatever your beef is with John Jones, knock yourself out. Uh, there is no way in hell that John Jones doesn't want to fight Aspinall. So that I guarantee you. So with that being said, say John Jones gets past Stipe and he wants a bigger contract. John Jones is doing John Jones right now. That's what he does. You know what I mean? Th th that's what he does. Um, there is nobody that we've ever dealt with that, when I tell you, is not afraid to fight anybody. Um, it's John Jones. And, and I just told her, I, I believe John Jones Aspinall happens if he beats Stipe. So John Jones saw that clip. He responded via X. He wrote, man, I appreciate the boss and the comments he made at last night's press conference. Sounds like I have some massive options on the table, an athlete's dream. Right now, I need to get back to focusing on the task at hand. Despite what some of the casuals think, Stipe is really no joke. It's crazy that we live in a world where you can go from the best heavyweight ever to washed up after a bad performance. The reality is Francis would have knocked out 98% of people on the planet that night, but somehow Stipe is washed up. Stipe not competing in so long tells me that he's had plenty of time to heal and rebuild. Let me get back to focusing on the actual task at hand. That's what got me this far. My focus. I do what others can. On to some more news regarding John Jones and Tom Aspinall. Tom did end up posting that video addressing John and Dana White. He posted this to his Instagram. In the caption, he wrote, Where are you, Johnny Bones? Is it time for retirement? He left a comment on the post saying, Any help, Dana White? When you talk about who's the baddest dude in the world, you put two guys in a room and who walks out, John Jones walks out of the room every time. Exactly right, Dana. We need to get John in a room first. Let's go and find the room. Hello, John? 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 Hello, John? Oh, boy. John, John! 
It was at this moment that he knew. Sorry, mate. I thought you were someone else. Sorry. John? There he is. We've got him. John! John! Steve Ersig released a statement on his loss to Kai Car France at UFC 305. Steve posted this video to his Instagram. Hey everyone, it's uh, been a few days since I fought on UFC 305. Just want to say thank you to all my supporters. Um, thank you to everybody in Perth. It was great to hear you cheer as I walked out, and it was great to be a part of this experience. But um, yeah, live and learn. I'll be back. Thanks everyone. Aljamain Sterling does not think Drikas Duplessis striking looks good, despite him beating Robert Whittaker, Sean Strickland, and Israel Adesanya. Aljo thinks Drikas' willpower and desire to win is why his style works. So many questions for myself. Duplessis, all right, I'm pretty sure everyone has the same opinion because I get this same thing when people talk about my striking. I'm like, do I look just as bad as DDP when he's striking? Because that's... It doesn't look great, but it works. The guy keeps winning. I think it's time for us to accept this, that not all shapes and forms of champions and MMA fighters to get to the top of the mountain have to look the same. We don't all have to be this crisp, clean striker to win a belt. No knock on Izzy. Izzy had some moments, but I would say the one thing, the intangible that we have to look at is that willpower and that desire of a guy to win like DDP. There were just moments where he was getting hit where it's like, this might be it. Ah, Izzy might get back his belt for the third time. And then DDP just comes back with this awkward barrage of punches, punching over the top, like he's swimming and paddling as hard as he can in the water and just thumping mofos, just thumping them. And I'm just like, how is this working? I'm looking at the guys like, how does this work? Why does this work? Is this the only sport where you could get away with such blasphemy? <laughs> but you can't knock it. DDP is good at what he does. Michael Bisping absolutely cannot stand Jake Paul. Bisping thinks Jake is pathetic for agreeing to box Mike Tyson when Mike is 58 years old and says he's a joke to the whole combat sports world. On his YouTube channel, Bisping said, we know the fight is a joke to be honest. But let's see what the press conference delivers. See if it can get us any more excited for this absolute shit show. This farce of a fight. I'm not very convinced it will. Jake, I hate to point out the obvious. That makes you look pathetic. You just admitted that you're going up against an old man, who is a legend, of course, but he's not that guy anymore. Jake Paul, he's a total, he's just a tool bag. I'm not going to lower myself and swear. Look at him. It's nice to see that he's finally getting booed and the kind of response that he deserves. You are a joke. You are a disgrace to the combat world. You're an imposter. You're a wannabe. You're a fake. Challenge yourself, you pathetic man. You pathetic individual. Fighting is about challenging yourself. Granted business, killing it in that regard. But don't give me this fighter bullshit. That's what gets on my nerves. The man's almost 60. He's almost a pensioner. Mike Tyson was a terrifying individual. To go up against that man in his prime, Jesus Christ. That was one of the scariest individuals that we've ever seen throughout any combat sport. The man was a straight killer. Was, again, the key word. I'm 45. When I was 25, I was a different person. I was a maniac. I was out of control and I would have fought anybody. And if I was Jake Paul right now at 26 years old, and you said to me, we're going to give you someone that's 58 years old, I'd have been like, oh my God, you're going to pay me to do this? You're going to pay me 40 million, whatever the price tag is, to go out there and beat up a guy like that? Oh my God, I would have said, stick it up your ass. Give me someone who is my age, because that is not a competition. And that is not what a true fighter would say and should say. Daniel Cormier believes that Israel Adesanya is now in a tricky situation after his loss to Drikas. On his YouTube channel, DC said he looked like he was going to retire because he took his gloves off, but then he said, I ain't going nowhere, I'm staying here. That's a tricky thing for Adesanya, because now he has to go and fight fights that would seem to mean less than anything he has done for a really, really long time. You know he had fought 12 straight title fights, and has now lost two title fights in a row, one to Strickland, one to Duplessis. How long will it take him to earn his way back to another championship opportunity? 
This weight class is on fire though. I know it's hard whenever a long reigning champion goes away, but the state that it's in today is as good as middleweight has been for a long time. You've got Izzy still there, you've got Rob Whitaker who's still there, you've got Chemaev who's still there, you've got Sean Strickland who's still there, and now we've got Alex Pajeda saying I went to 205 and became the champion, but I never said I wasn't going back down to 85. That would probably be the most worrisome thought for me as a contender at middleweight, but it makes the division unbelievably fun. So Dana White is not happy with Marab Dvalishvili. As you guys know, Marab is scheduled to fight Sean O'Malley for the Bantamweight title at UFC 306. Marab posted this to his Instagram yesterday, revealing he suffered a cut above his eye which required stitches. He wrote, calm down, it's all good, just a little training injury, never pulled out of a fight, and never will. I'm coming for you, O'Malley, stronger than ever. Dana White went off over this. Dana thinks it's next level stupid to be revealing injuries on social media prior to a major fight like this. Marab's cut, what do you know about Marab's cut? Can you make any... Uh... The whole world knows about Marab's cut. He posted it. Uh, I mean, I don't, our guys are so dumb. It's, it's next level unbelievable. It, it's one, the, all the stuff that I talk about boxing, what I will give boxing is when something happens in a camp, man, let me tell you what, it does not leak. You know, our guys can't wait to throw it up on social media it's just it's a small cut it's no big deal but uh obviously needed to be posted again against a guy like o'malley who is a sharpshooter and who's a very accurate puncher now all of a sudden there's a big target for him and why the f would you want him to know that it is next level stupid some of these guys are so stupid it's it's mind-boggling it's unbelievable. Sean O'Malley also reacted to Marab's cut. On X, Sean wrote, this little rat better not pull out, I swear to God. Let's go, guys. September 14th. I'm coming. Sean O'Malley, you are in big trouble, my friend. Stop talking too much, bro. You know I'm dangerous. And then you know, you know what's going to happen. You already know. I want to tell all these people everything is good. This is my third training session today. I got a little cut today, but this is part of the training. This is nothing. I'm here with my team. Training every day, like I said, this is my third time training session today. I'm here, I'm coming. I'm here in the gym 24 seven guys and working. You think this little cut gonna stop me? I don't understand. I guess you guys are weak and you guys are making excuse whoever talking too much. Sean Strickland says that he's down to rematch Israel Desanya if he does end up beating Drikas Duplessis. Sean did an interview with ESPN today. He went on to say, I don't care, man. You know, I've never picked a fight. I've never said no. I've never said anything. If he wants to come run that back, run it back, dude. I don't give a f Just leave your dog collar at home, you f***ing weirdo. Sean actually had words for Izzy yesterday as well on Eric Nixick's new podcast called Verse Us. A link to the full podcast will be in the description. Sean says that he just doesn't think Izzy is a good fighter. So when he fought Kelvin, dude, I think Kelvin sucks. Uh. So like everyone's like, everyone's like, oh man, is he's this and that? Like, dude, I've sparred Kelvin so many times, where I'm like, you kind of had a close fight with Kelvin. Yeah. Like you're not that good. Like you're not that good. You fought uh, Costa. Costa was scared of you. You blew on me, fell asleep. Like, is he just not that? good mm. and that's going to wrap it up for the news thanks for watching for daily mma news and content subscribe to full mount mma and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos here are the three top comments from last video the first one's from william it says no aiden ross or conor mcgregor thank you full mount got you the second one's from adaptable gaming it says usman complaining about division and then dividing people by race is crazy he and don lemon should do a show together and the final one's from kevin it says khalil turning down the alex fight would be like your boss offering you your dream promotion but you denying it so your co-worker bob gets it let the man be it's not his fault just a man chasing his dream those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.